Welcome back, people, to another episode of BDC. Yes, Bad Dating Chronicles, where I interview people about the worst encounters they had, whether it's dating, hookups, or whatever it be in between. So I am so good to have this next person come on and talk about their BDC. So I would love to welcome my next guest, Miss Spirit. Hey y'all, how's it going? What's awesome, girl. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? Oh, you know, just living, you know, trying to stay afloat. Can't complain. How about you? Just living the dream, living the dream. I heard that you got a dating experience or experiences of your own. So please enlighten us about what's going on. Yeah, so um I'm Polly. Um, so I date like multiple people at a time. I went on like a dating um, rampage and I was just kind of like feeling myself out, you know, testing the waters. And I have this date that I call the seafood fiasco. Because what the fuck I, is a seafood fiasco? Yeah. So I met this guy online as I meet most of my dates or whatever. And um, he was a truck driver, which was cool because you're on the road a lot, which means you're not too committed, which is cool for casual. Asked me to go out to dinner with him to a seafood boil place. I'm fluffy. I love to eat and I definitely love some seafood. So I'm like, let's do it. You know, it's on the side of town I'm familiar with. Let's go check it out. This man finally shows up like 15 minutes, 20 minutes later. And he smells like straight ganja, like just straight gas, no cologne, just gas. And I'm like, ah, oh, that's why you're late. So this isn't about to be a second date. Like I'll rip already. I can, I'm just not, not here for it. But I'm like, we're here, let's eat. So we sit down and this man is like talking and that's cool. I love conversation. He not asking me a damn thing about myself. Like I'm getting his whole backstory. I know too much about his baby moms, both of them. It's just like, okay, cool. Um, so we get our food. Food is trash. I don't know how a seafood place fucks up seafood Alfredo, but they did. Like Olive Garden does a better seafood Alfredo. It was disappointing. Damn. So, <laughs> Damn. It's yeah. yeah. fucked up. It's fucked up. Okay. <laughs> so he's talking and food is flying from his mouth while he's speaking. Like, I'm over here dodging the bits of fucking shrimp and crab <laughs> as he's talking to me. And I'm like, yo, this is this is not it. This ain't the one. So I'm just trying to eat, get through it, and end it as fast as possible. And the waitress, in her mind, she sees us and is like, there's no way these two people are on a date. There's no way. She can read my body language. She sees how we're both dressed. She brings us two separate bills. <laughs> And I'm ready to pay for mine. I'm like, I'm all good. I'm like, let's go. He gets upset. He is like, they've never brought me two checks here ever. So one, I know that this is where you bring all your girls. Um, and now he's just trying to like puff his chest out, upset. And I'm like, okay. So I'm just wanting to get out of here. He's trying to make a scene low key and he's being rude to the waitress and I'm apologizing on her behalf, on his behalf. And we head out. I'm trying to say goodbye at the door. I'm not trying to like continue this. And he's like, no, let me walk you to your car. So I'm like, I'm like, fine. Let him walk me to the car. And he's like, so what are you getting into after this? And I'm like, I gotta clean my fish tank. Wait a minute, the fish tank. Yeah, I had, I had fish at the time. So I was like, I gotta clean my fish tank. That's what my excuse was. Like, that's the best you come up with is I gotta clean my fish tank. Yeah. Yeah. You, <laughs> like, don't get me wrong. You couldn't come up with no other excuse besides let me clean my so fish tank. When, <laughs> when I said that, that was kind of trying to be a hint, as in obviously cleaning a fish tank is something that can wait. It's not like, you know, dire, like my fish are gonna die right now if I don't go do it. That's kind of my hint of like, yeah, I'm not interested in the second day. I'm trying to be nice, you mm -hmm. know? Yeah. And so we part ways and whatever. I get home and he texts me like an hour later and it's like, are you done cleaning your fish tank? <laughs> <laughs> so then I had to let him down softly again. And I was just like, yeah. So I'm oh gonna my God. You again. Um, but I, I heard what I'm looking for. <laughs> like I've heard some excuses, but never like a girl told me, yeah, well, I got to clean my fish tank. <laughs> it's dire reports. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
So, and that's mild. Like that's a mild bad date. Oh my god. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. So, all right, let me let me just let me just rewind a little bit. Mm -hmm. So, you met this dude, right? Mhm. Mm was there any like any communication in between when y'all got to the date that made you seem like okay i was interested or did you excuse me or did you automatically call it off to be like yeah this nigga just ain't cutting the cutting the mustard um so before the date he seemed fine like he seemed cool with truck drivers i know they make their own income so i wasn't worried about him um being one of those guys that's trying to hit my pockets um and he talked about traveling which is something that i at the time was wanting to do more of so i'm like okay cool like there's potential here let's see you know okay. um so I, it was just like I, I tried to not spend too much time talking to people online before i go on a first date um because i feel like you get to know more about them in person um yeah. and when you talk too long on the app sometimes you just miss out on the first date so now i'm not trying to put your business out there but what app were we talking about because there's plenty of it mm. was it like facebook where we're talking like plenty of fish okay oh. cute baby because that's the ones i know about so so the main ones that i use are okay cupid tender hinge and bumble hinge. and i think it was on okay cupid because from my understanding hinge is nothing more like free pussy because <laughs> because what? the women yeah yeah seriously that's someone's how someone put it to me like hinge is like the woman has to like initiate to where you 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 like her but she, and she has to like back and then send a send a message like that i know i don't think okay. hinge is but i know bumbles like that okay so you just on all the sites trying to get that dick yeah really? yeah i mean i'm casting multiple nets i guess I, that's 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 what it seems like and i'm not casting aspersions you're a woman you do what you want you know you're entitled so you know you caught this truck driver he thought it was going to be something and then apparently it was not because you had to go clean your fish mm -hmm. i mean i could have been like more rude i could have been i could have said i had to walk my fish wow <laughs> if i said that now that would have been disrespectful Oh shit! I, I would have been mad if a girl told me, "Yeah, well, um, I'm just gonna go, go home and walk my fish." I'd be like, "Bitch, what?" <laughs> yeah, yeah. So after this happened and the dialogue went down, what was his initial reaction to this? Of him saying you saying this to him? When I said it, he kind of like, "Bitch, what?" <laughs> but, <laughs> Like, I think the date went way better in his mind than it actually went. Um, but yeah, and then he just kind of like, well, okay, just hit me up after it. I was like, mm -hmm. okay. And when I didn't, he hit me up and I was like, nah, fam, this ain't it. Okay, so I want you to tell me if this is a true or false statement. So when you first, so when they say a woman is attracted to a man when they first see him from the very first moment, they like get out the car and you look him up and down from head to toe. Was you attracted to this man? No. Even before he opened his mouth, was you attracted to him? No. Damn, that was just a waste of time. Yeah. So you was just like, I wasn't not attracted to him. It was just kind of like, eh. eh. Okay, so what could have made it better? Um, if he didn't smell like he came straight from the dispensary okay. and if he dressed like he was from this decade, this um, and I think the grill also ruined it. So what decade was he dressed in? Early 2000s. See, if women nowadays, and no offense to you, so don't take this the wrong way. If women nowadays don't know how they dressed in, say, the 09s, the 2000s, 2012, 13, and so forth, then I can understand. But if you don't know nothing from about 10, 20 years ago, then it's almost like, how is a man supposed to be dressed to impress you? So he was wearing like an oversized t-shirt, like one of those t-shirts that I'm pretty sure was a dress if he had untucked it. 
And he had the really baggy jeans on and a really big belt buckle. So you remember like Soulja Boy and them, how they used to dress back Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's what yeah. like, he dressed like. And this man was older than me and that's what killed me. Cause I was just like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not saying you gotta be fancy and everything, but like, I'm not expecting you to wear skinny jeans or nothing, but you can wear like a boot cut, something a little more fitted, you know, maybe like, I don't know, a, sh a shirt that doesn't look like it could go down to your knees. Please don't tell me he was dressed like it was 2007. <laughs> yes, oh, sir. my spirit, please, please be honest with me. Please don't tell me this nigga was dressed like it was Soldier Boy cranked that. Please don't tell me. He was. Oh, my God. Yeah, it's trying to Superman someone, but it wasn't me. <laughs> God, people, you can't make this stuff up. He was trying to Superman spirit. He really was, but it didn't happen. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, um, after all this happened, did you ever talk to him ever again? Oh hell no. Why not? Why would I? I'm not gonna waste his time or my time. What's no. I mean, he could have thought he made a good impression on you. Obviously, he thought when he was trying to ask me what I was getting into afterwards, and he did not. Like, what? well, I mean, he was he was trying to get into your spirit and cracked out a little bit. So, mm, look, there he gonna have to sage. He gonna have to dip himself in some holy water. But like, I'm curious about your dating experiences because something had to prompt this. <laughs> I mean, I just I came up with this, and I'll share it with everybody. I don't mind because. We've all dated. It don't matter, you know, whether it's been in someone's DMs, it's been on some app, or it's just been in everyday life. We've all had some type of experience where we made it made us think like, damn, did this really happen? Like we're actually thinking like this this person really come into our life and to where we want to think like, what the fuck? Like honestly, what the um, fuck? <laughs> this is the time that I went on a date with a black white supremacist. Yeah. Um, I typically like guys with like long hair, but he was bald and I was trying to date outside my like typical comfort zone. Um, and so I get there and he tells me like he's from a small town near Kentucky, which if anyone knows anything about Kentucky, Kentucky is known for their fried chicken and for being racist as hell. It's not safe for black people. It's kind of like how Illinois is not safe for black people anywhere except for in Chicago. That's kind of Kentucky. Um, so that was the first red flag, and I should have known that. I should have asked more questions before I agreed to meet up with him. My fault. Um, but then I also found out that he was Jehovah's Witness. I'm not religious. I'm very spiritual, and like it's not going to mix with my type of spiritualness. So that was red flag number two. And then he launches into this discussion about how he thinks it's okay to ghost people, which is not a discussion you want to have on a first date. And this man was also older than me, so I expected more maturity wasn't there. Um, and so I'm like, you know, I'm not okay with ghosting people. I like to at least tell them like, hey, I'm not interested. Um, and he was like, I'm not wasting time on that. No one needs closure to the So in my mind, I'm like, you know what? This is definitely not gonna be a second date, but we're already here at the barcade. Let's just have some fun and play some games. So we're playing games or whatever, and it's going relatively well for, you know, but I'm still definitely not interested in a second date. He decides to stop for a drink and we were talking. So he pretty much asked me if I was Hispanic, which most people assume I'm Hispanic. And um, I make a joke. I'm like, no, I'm black. And he's like, what else? And he's like, and I was like, well, I'm white, unfortunately. Joking. Um, and that pissed him the fuck off. He was like, why unfortunately? And I was just like, even white people don't want to be white. Like, and he he goes into this tirade about how black people are so racist against white people, how it's not okay to say things like that, that's prejudiced and racist, and mind you, I'm also white, so I'm just like, okay, like, we're, chill out, it was a joke. He just goes, I usually like to tell people that I'm black enough to get pulled over for nothing. That's how I like to say it. <laughs> I'm, I'm black enough that people definitely know I'm not white, <laughs> but most people don't know that I'm black. <laughs> They, I always get Hispanic until they see me with my entire family, and yeah. But 
apparently my family's down with the squirrel. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, so he goes into his tirade and he's going on and on and we're going back and forth. Like for reference, I, um, graduated last year and, um, I did my, uh, senior thesis. I actually did two senior thesis on, um, race performance theory, um, through analyzing a, um, it's a book called Mixed. So it's an anthology on uh, the biracial or multiracial experience. So I'm well versed in racial studies and being a black person and a biracial person. I know a lot about race. Um, and he wasn't expecting that. So he's going on and on. And he finally says something about the uh, Black Panther Party. And I'm just like, yo, stop. Like they were a trailblazer and you know civil rights and they were done dirty by the government and all that type of shit and you're not going to talk shit about the black Panther party you know and then he was just like well people give shit to the kkk and i was just like because they're bad and he was like i think the kkk is necessary he literally said that i think the kkk is necessary and i'm like you know that they're terrorists right like they're classified as a terrorist organization and so i was like yep date's over i'm ready to go like it, i just said it. it's past my bedtime like i'm it's curfew i gotta go home and then he's like he's like you know walking me to my car and he's like you know you sounded so educated i was surprised by how educated you sound my dating profile had a picture of my graduate of me and my graduation robes and i had honor cords and this man still thought i was going to be ignorant so I was like, all right, but he's like, so when are we doing date two? I'm like, oh, you think there's going to be a date two? And he's like, yeah, why would? And I was like, you're funny. You're funny. Goodbye. So I go home and I just, I don't believe in ghosting. So I was just like, you know what? I'm not going to ghost because I don't believe in it, but I'm not interested in you at all. I hope you find what you're looking for. Bye, block, delete. Like, And this is in the Columbus area? Oh my God, but he's not from here. He's not from here. But yes, that was... So, area. from my understanding, from my research, you have your own podcast? I do. I do. Really? Well, go ahead and, you know, I'll give your 30 seconds to two minutes spiel about your podcast. Go ahead. Let's hear it. It's shorter than that. Um, I do have a podcast. It's called Spirit Speaks. Uh, it streams on all your major platforms, whether that be Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Pandora. We're everywhere. Just Google us. <laughs> you'll, find, you'll find us. Um, it's the cute little ghost logo. I don't know if you can see that. I'll try to back yeah. that up. That's us. Mm -hmm. Um, but I talk about everything from politics to pop culture, everything in between, um, episodes every week. I like to try to do a lot of guest episodes. I do an artist series. I interview musical artists. I interview educators, everyone. Um, so yeah, I always say let spirit speak, speak to your spirit. Always an eye opener here or a different perspective, especially from a woman of your color character. So. Thank you. I appreciate you for having me. It was Likewise. It was really enjoyable. Bad yes, uh, dating chronicles where we talk about all things dating, casual encounters, miss hookups, hookups that you never want to have again. So, this has been another episode of Bad Dating Chronicles. I'm your host, Will. My guest was, you know, Spirit from the Spirit Speaks. Make sure you go check her out. All her information will be linked down in the description. Make sure you like, subscribe to the channel. So, this is Will, and I will talk to you all soon. Y'all take care.